Hey there guys, how we doing? Welcome to Analytics Corner on the Blue Abroad channel. If you are new around here, please drop a like. Please make sure you're subscribed and turn the notification bell on. And today what we're looking at is two key matchups for us to beat the dreaded Bombers this weekend. I don't know about you, but if there is one team of all the other 17 clubs in the AFL that I really look forward to seeing us match up against, it is Essendon because I just can't stand them. And I think this week has been case in point. They have dragged AFL into a complete sandstorm of emotion, only to come out the end and say that it's not their fault. So let's have a look into it. So the first player we have picked up is Mr. Zach Merritt. Now, for me, I hate to give compliments to Essendon players, but probably one of the most underrated players in the AFL competition. Someone that has exponentially increased his output and his efficiency year on year, and he's a real staple of the Essendon side. And he's a very key way, he's a very key cog in how they play. If we look at his numbers, they are pretty impressive, and a lot of them are elite in the AFL competition. 25 touches. Just over 25 touches, 11.5 kicks, 14 handballs make up that. 77% disposal efficiency puts him in the top echelon of midfielders this season. Decent metres gained, 326. Decent contested possession make up as well, just coming under just below 40%. Ground ball gets, which is super important in the AFL. He's not known for that, but it is AFL average. Three and a half clearances, three and a half tackles and 16 pressure acts. He's a key cog in how they move the ball. If you find that Saad is probably their primary operator for transition, Hooker's probably their primary stopper down there, Merritt would be the one that just keeps that engine room going. He plays a very key role in how Essendon transition, how Essendon get the ball into the forward line, and keeping the ball going. Something that Worsfold really has in his side is his ability to remove it from the contest and look to get it on the outside. And Merritt is a very key component of that. He's very clean. He's kind of like what you would do if you went to Audi and asked for Tom Mitchell. You'd probably get a, a Zach Merritt type footballer. He's very good. He's going to be very important to stop. A bit like Dangerfield last week when we discussed him. It's going to be important. This will be an easy job though for someone like Ed Kerner. He's got the engine. This is what Zach Merritt has. One of the criticism of Zach Merritt is he, is he shy in the contest? And as we can see, his ground ball gets are astronomical, but that is a myth. He is tough. It's going to be an intriguing thing. If he gets a lot of the ball, genuinely Essendon play well. And he is a kind of guy that works his way into the game. So if you can stop him early doors, genuinely you stop him. So far this year against Sydney, he wasn't stopped and he had a field day. And it really did allow them to get themselves over the line because his use is exceptional. Up next, we've got Dylan Shield, a player that is no stranger to Carlton fans as he was intimately signing. He's had a really good year this year, being in the top five in all games played. And let's have a look at his numbers this year. You can see an 85 rated footballer, 28.5 touches per game, made up predominantly in kicks, 16.5 versus 12 handballs. And one criticism of him is he is the biggest, most famous butcher since the butcher that Johnny Depp played. But he gets 74% disposal efficiency. That is quite high. That is in the elite category as well. He's really cleaned that up this year and he is hitting targets at will. 327 metres gained, 13 contested possessions, 7.5 ground ball gets, 8.5 clearances. He is becoming a clearance specialist. Tackles again on the low side, 2.5 and pressure acts, 12.5. Solid player Dylan Shield, and they look to break the lines. This is the guy that looks to take the game out of a contest. And it's something that Carlton will have to be wary of. He looks to find the gaps in contested football and run away from them as fast as he can. And one thing is, is his kicking isn't as bad as many people document. It is very poor though. That percentage goes down when it's under pressure. The skill of Dylan Shield is he can get away. His first five steps are lightning. And that allows him the time to get into space, give himself a bit of time. And when he has a bit of time, he doesn't turn the ball over. It's going to be super important this, that whoever is on him is going to be up to make sure he's within ears length of Dylan throughout the game. If he's not, Dylan will be able to influence the contest and start hitting targets. And once he hits up inside 50s, invariably they become scoring opportunities. 
He's a very solid footballer and probably one that probably doesn't get the kudos that he probably deserves. And this short style of game for an explosive type of player is super dangerous. In my opinion, someone's going to have to go to him who's got a bit of leg speed. And I wouldn't mind seeing old Sammy Walsh on this guy with a nice run with Rob. Someone who's got had very similar criticism in recent weeks as Dylan Shield of ability to hit target by foot. I think it'd be a very intriguing matchup to put him on. Sam Walsh isn't a bad tackler. Sam Walsh does get decent pressure act numbers as well. And he's also got the engine. And I think it'd be a very good contest just to see these two not do a tag roll, but just to go one up on each other. If Sam Walsh can have more influence than Dylan Shield, Cowton will certainly win the game. It is in my opinion that this game, I really do think he's got a lot of small entrails of stories. I think with the Eddie Betts saga that Essendon fans started, I also think with the, on the back of a phenomenal performance last week, I would say Carlton are favourites going into this one. And I think that that week, we've seen that weak stoppages and things have affected sides. I'm going with a Carlton win here and I think it'll be 25+. plus. These two though, if they get an influence on it, that may change. But they're the two. That's been Analytics Corner. As always, enjoy yourselves. Have a wonderful week. Stay Navy Blue, folks. Dan out.